What's good YouTube? It's your boy Moose Loss Fitness. Today I got a question by someone who came up to me in the gym. Was like, Yo, Musa, like, how can I grow my arms? And I was like, Tim, hmm, good question. When I really thought about it in that moment, I was like, There's this one thing that if you do, it will develop your arms quite a lot. No, I'm not talking about, you know, I could easily just say to him, yeah, just do more curls, spend more time focusing on arms, um, which you should do. Um, again, if it's a weak point, you need to put more focus onto it. But the one thing that a lot of people don't talk about when it comes to growing your arms is, drum roll please. Compound movements. I know some of you are thinking, wait, what? Compound movements? Yes. I might add some clips here if I can, but things like deadlift. The deadlift works your whole body. Of course, there's main muscles that it targets, but when you're lifting up 200 kg off the floor with your arms, how much stress do you reckon that's gonna put on your arms compared to a dumbbell that's 12 kg that you're curling? I might get it through to you. When you're bench pressing, yes, chest is the main exercise how much stress are you really putting on your triceps as well when you're benching over 100 kg you, you get where i'm coming from yeah, yeah. military press when you're pushing like 60 plus kg over your head it's not only shoulders you're using your arms as well and then you always have the barbell curl which is a bicep exercise you know um overhead tricep extensions you know things like that but when you talk about the main compounds your deadlift your bench not squat squat is mainly legs there's no arms involved in that but that's what i'm trying to tell you guys when you're doing exercises like pull-ups you know that's a compound movement dips you know yes you can target your chest but you also target your triceps and when you start doing things like weighted dips and stuff how much stress are you putting on your arms you know weighted pull-ups how much stress are you putting on? of course these are not like the primary muscles you're working but they're still secondary and they're still taxing you're still putting a lot of stress on them and they this is the thing if your deadlift is going up your bench is going up you know your pull-ups are going up your dips are going up that's not just that muscle getting stronger it's also the secondary muscles that are getting stronger which means they are growing as well you know it doesn't they're not gonna stay the same they're gonna have to follow you know follow the leader 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 follow the leader you know they're gonna follow along so this is why i said that to him today and he was like hmm what's a compound movement not many people know what compound movements are. So I had to explain it to him and he was like, hmm. But I was like thinking more of like, like focusing on the bicep. I was like, me, myself, yeah? I've got fairly big arms. My arms ain't that small. You know what I'm saying? I don't really train arms like that. Like I don't dedicate like one session to arms. You know what I mean? I've always done like, you know, um, chest and triceps, back and biceps, shoulders, legs type of situation. I've done chest and back, um, skin, shoulders and arms, legs. Type of situation so i never i've never dedicated like a day where it's just purely arms um but when i'm doing my workouts and stuff i might do one or two exercises that are bicep and stuff but when i'm training like chest back all the other ones i'm still involving arms arms is always involved in your workouts regardless of what you do you're still going to train arms yeah but again if you do want to tailor it to that you can just tailor one workout to arms i wouldn't advise you to do that every other day that's just not smart your arms need time to recover as well. So if you do that like every four, three to four days, um, then yeah, cool. But there's other things that you can do in order to develop your arms as well. Things like progressive overload. You need to have a training program. I advise you guys, whoever's watching this, if you don't have a training program, you need to fix up. Cause you can't just go to the gym, just go in the gym and say, what am I gonna train today? No, it doesn't work. You need to know what you're doing, how you're doing it and how if you're making improvements. If you're like always, oh, I'm staying the same, I'm staying the same, I'm not changing. You've never tracked. You don't know what you're doing. You know what I mean? You go into the gym, you're like, mm, today I just feel like training this and I'm going to do this and I'm going to go home. And then you're complaining about not making progress, you know? You need to know where you're going and how you're going to get there. So have a training program. Ask someone to make your training program. You have people that will make it for free. Someone like me, if you ask me, music, can I make a training program? The only thing I would ask you is, you know, give me a testimonial. I give you a training program, you give me updates, picture updates. Boom, there we go, we can work together. So if you're interested in that, send me an email to musalovesfitness at gmail.com and I'll get back to you. Um, tempo is another thing. I'm not a big like preacher of tempo because I don't really do it that much myself, but it does help like 
doing like fast reps and then all of a sudden you're slowing it down with the same rep, same weight, it's a different type of feeling. You know what I mean? And you are adding more stress, especially on the negative. I do that quite a lot on the negative. Like when I'm doing a bicep curl, yes, the coming up might be like fast, but the going down the negative part of the movement, I, I will slow it down to like three, four, and then come up fast, three, four. That as well causes a lot of stimulus in your muscle and that's also progress, progressive overload. Because if you're doing it fast tempo 10 and then you slow it down and you do that for 10 as well, the slowing down is way better than the 10 that you're doing fast. Um, but yeah, again, it's up to you. Or you can start adding more reps and more sets. But at the end of the day, how many reps and sets are you really gonna keep adding? Are you gonna go to 20 sets? You're gonna be in the gym for about five hours if you do that. So it's gonna get to a point where you also plateau and that's when you need to make these like little tweaks, start adding things like supersets, doing two exercises at once, drop sets, um, you know, when like you do, if you're safe, like your last set is like 10 reps, drop down the weight, do another five, drop down the weight, do another five. That again, is still progressive overload. So there is multiple things you can do in order to develop your arms. But I thought today, let me just talk to you guys, give you the one thing that I, I don't hear on the internet, people talking about doing compound movements to grow your arms. You don't hear it but it works, like, it's true, you know? If you're doing the deadlift for your back, developing your lower back and your legs, your arms have to follow, they have to keep up. So yeah, too much talking, don't want to talk any longer. Hopefully you guys learned something in this video. If there's any other topics you guys want me to talk about, please comment below and I will do that for you guys. Again, I ain't no fitness personal trainer or anything like that, I ain't certified, but I know my shit because I've been doing this for some time now, you know? So, <laughs> um, yeah, I'll catch you guys in the next video. Love life, love life, love life. Peace.